Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation, and in this video I'll be talking about installation considerations and doing a demo of the installation for Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. So let's start with requirements. On the server side, we require a Microsoft Windows Server version 2012 through 2016. On the database side, we support Microsoft SQL Server 2012 through 2016. Uh, we require the MSMQ feature set be installed as uh, part of this process inside your Windows Server. The Intel Emma installation will actually take care of installing that for you if you don't have it already. Of course, we require a web server to run this too since it's a web app, so IIS 7 or later, and a .NET Framework 452, along with the IIS Rewrite Tool extension. On the client side, we support Microsoft Windows 7 and 10, and Intel AMT versions 11 or later, uh, in our platform. So that is akin to the sixth generation Intel Core vPro platform or later. So when you install Emma, there's a few network ports that you need to keep track of that you need to let through your firewall. It's all fairly basic stuff. So uh, for the Emma website itself over TLS, TCP port 443, that's pretty standard. Now for remote management uh, for Intel Emma, uh, we require TCP port 8080B uh, a pass through, and that's used by Intel. Uh, MS software agents as well as Intel AMT de uh, devices using uh, serial connections to be able to talk to the server itself. And finally, if you want to be able to get into the web UI uh, on systems to do some diagnostic work if you need to, uh, you can also forward PCP port 8084 and that will allow you to get into the, uh, the web UI in Intel AMT. So one of the key things to understand is identity when you're doing an installation of Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. You're going to see this dialog pop up uh, asking you how you want to define the external identity of the server. We always recommend using a host name, a fully qualified domain name, to identify your server, especially if you're going to do cloud-based installs. This is very important because this is, again, how your devices that are out on the Internet are going to find this server. Uh, you can use uh, IP address only if you want to. However, there's you know, all the scaling problems that come with using just an IP address. If using a cloud provider where you have uh, an IP address that changes, well, then all of your systems aren't going to be able to find it. So again, stick with an FQDN. And uh, you know, digging in a little more to that, you know, we say host name only in terms of the identity mode is what we prefer. Uh, you have the option of being able to use a mix of host name and IP address. But again, we recommend the, the host name only. And uh, if you are going to be using, uh, say, a cloud-based provider, make sure that that's a, uh, a host name uh, that is uh, identifiable uh, through the internet. Uh, most cloud-based providers will give you some type of DNS hosting, but if you own your own domain, uh, such as you see in the example here, uh, vprodemo.com, you can create a, a name record for your host there. And if you are going to use an IP address, especially if you're using cloud and DMZ, make sure that you're using the external or internet IP address, not the internal one uh, that comes with your you know, type of virtual private network that you might have uh, in your cloud-hosted environment. But again, make sure if you are going to use the IP address that it is uh, the external one not your internal network one. Next, I'd like to talk about the user authentication options you get when you're doing your Intel Endpoint Management Assistant installation. You've got two options that will pop up during the installation in the wizard here. You'll see the option for normal accounts or domain authentication. So with normal accounts, those are managed inside of the Emma application itself. With domain authentication, you can uh, work with uh, Emma and Active Directory. Let's dig into a little more of a what we mean when we talk about these two modes. So uh, with normal accounts, uh, those are best uses in cases where Active Directory integration is not practical or not an option. With domain authentication in Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, you can again have that simplification of not having to have yet another name and password to access uh, an application in your environment. And if you are going to use uh, uh, Emma in the cloud, you'll need to extend Active Directory to your cloud provider in order to make uh, domain authentication work. So keep that in mind. All right, now that we've got some background, let's get into the, the fun stuff here, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of the installation of Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. All right, now that I've logged into my server that I'll be installing the Intel Endpoint Management Assistant on, we can begin the installation process. I've already unzipped the uh, installation uh, package onto the desktop here, and we're going to run the Emma installer. We'll click on the top icon here to begin the installation wizard, and we'll start the process. So the first thing you're going to see noted here is that the Intel Emma installation wizard will overwrite anything that's in the default website or in the uh, uh, inetpub web root folder, wherever you store that on your server. So please bear that in mind. If that's not going to be a problem for you, you can continue. So I'll hit Next. 
We'll accept the terms and conditions in the license. And now we get to the database setup. In my case, I just have a local SQL Server running. I wouldn't recommend that for a production install. I'd recommend a separate SQL Server database, uh, just following industry standard best practices. I'm going to go ahead and keep the YAML database name the same. We'll hit Next to continue. All right, now we come to the server identity that we talked about previously. In my case, I'm going to be using a cloud-based environment. I'm just going to call my server emma.vprodemo.com. I've got DNS settings out there that'll match that so I know I can use it. And then for the identity mode, we're going to stick with the default of use the FQDN hostname only. We'll hit next to continue. And now I come to the option of how we want to handle user authentication. Again, we have two options to use normal accounts, which are stored inside of the Intel Emma application itself, or to use domain authentication. For this example, I'll be using normal accounts. Now we define the port that the Intel Platform Manager will listen on for management uh, traffic. In this case, we're going to stick with the default of port 8000. And at this point, if I had an AMT provisioning certificate, I could import it now. But we're going to go ahead and take care of that step uh, later on in another demonstration. So we'll leave that blank and hit Next. And now, because we've chosen standard users, we have to create our first global administrator who can go through and create tenants and users for those tenants. And then also create our first tenant here with the tenant administrator account. All right, now that I've typed my account names and passwords in, we can continue. Hit Next we'll be prompted to create our first tenant. And you have to fill in the name and a description. Now that we have that done, we'll hit Next. And we'll review all the settings and be able to begin the installation. So you'll see within the server settings dialog here, everything that we've chosen, all the configurations. And if everything looks good to you, you can go ahead and hit Next and begin the installation process. So as that goes along, you see under the current status here at the bottom of the installation window, uh, what particular features are being installed, what particular things are being done. Uh, one thing I'd like to note is that the uh, Emma server installer will install all the needed roles in terms of IIS and everything else that you need to run the environment. So it's very nice in that stance that you don't have to do a whole lot to prepare ahead of time. But if you'd like to see additional information about what's happening during the installation, it's very easy to do. Go to the File menu and choose Advanced Mode. And you'll see that'll change the window here over to one that's going to show you uh, a rolling log of everything that happens with new entries in that log placed at the top of the screen. So now we'll go ahead and wait for the Intel Endpoint Management Assistant installation to finish. All right, at this point, the installation is complete. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to standard mode here. And uh, we'll give a, everything a moment to complete, and we'll bring up the Emma website and see what it looks like the first time you log in. So I've connected up to my new Emma website, and the first thing you're going to notice is a, a certificate error that pops up. That's because when you install Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, it sets up a self-signed cert to encrypt the uh, web management traffic. And in my case, I haven't replaced that cert yet. So I'm just going to hit the advanced options here and allow it to proceed. Now that we've done that, we see our login prompt. I'm going to go ahead and log in as my global admin account. And from here, we can go ahead and do the work of the global administrator. This is where I can go through and define additional users and tenants. I have links to do both of those options here. If we take a look now at our uh, existing tenants that we have, we're going to see we have one. And we're going to view that tenant. And that's that example tenant that we set up during the installation process. So at this point, our server's up and running. It's ready to go. And the next step is to go through and talk about the tenant configuration itself and what that looks like. Well, that concludes the, the demo and the uh, overview of things you want to keep in mind as you're doing your Intel MS server installation. Thanks for watching. I look forward to talking with you more about this.